Flight 6 is fast approaching with rapid progress in new confirmations from SpaceX and Elon Musk, raising the excitement level significantly. Meanwhile, Blue Origin has unveiled the latest hardware developments for New Glenn, although the launch date is still uncertain. In China, a newly unveiled replica of NASA's space shuttle is scheduled to provide supplies to the Tiangong space station. There's a lot of breaking news to cover, so let's dive into it in today's NR Studio episode. SpaceX will soon conduct its sixth Starship flight, marking the fourth milestone this year as they rapidly push Starship development forward. Following the announcement on November 6th, updates have highlighted recent progress on Ship 31, or S-31, specifically its heat shield. On November 11th, S-31 was launched, clearly showing off its redesigned tile pattern. SpaceX has achieved a significant reduction in the heat tile count, decreasing it from approximately 18,500 to 17,000, thereby cutting down by over 1,000 tiles. The changes allowed SpaceX to test new thermal protection materials and potentially add hardware to support capture for future recovery. After a quick return to the high bay, S-31 was rolled back to the pad that night, with SpaceX confirming on X that Starship had been moved to the pad at Starbase in preparation for our sixth test flight. Elon Musk stated that Starship Flight 6 is imminent, heightening expectations. Currently at the launch site, S-31 awaits integration with its booster, B-13. After completing a static burn test in late October, B-13 returned to the production site for checks, likely on its engines and Griffin, and now appears fully ready. Observers noted modifications to the hot stage with the discovery of a new stage ring in Mega Bay 1 on November 8th. This is a key component for igniting Starship's engines before full booster separation, a strategy aimed at smoother stage transitions and fuel savings. With S-31 and B-13 nearing completion, the launch will likely showcase more design innovations from SpaceX, especially in terms of sustainability. SpaceX aspires to achieve a bi-weekly launch cadence by next year, with this particular flight advancing their objectives of deploying Starship for NASA's Artemis program in future missions to Mars. As SpaceX continues to optimize Starship's potential, Flight 6 is expected to provide valuable data for refinement, reusability, and high-frequency launch capabilities. Deepening excitement about SpaceX's ambitious vision for space exploration. With these final steps, B-13 will likely head to the launch site with its new crown, indicating that it will likely not return to the production site. B-13's launch is expected to occur within the next day or two. Upon arrival at the launch site, it will be assembled alongside S-31 to conduct a wet test exercise. Once completed, the flight termination system will be installed, setting the stage for launch on the afternoon of November 18th. Meanwhile, on the 11th, the launch system itself underwent a test launch. Just prior to the deployment of the S-31, a comprehensive test was conducted in which the flame deflector, or water deluge system, was fully activated, discharging a substantial 350,000 gallons of water. With no reported issues, the test was declared a success. Musk subsequently affirmed that Flight 6 is imminent. Now, with all systems in place, final preparations are underway for the launch in the coming days. SpaceX will persist in its march towards the pinnacle objective, Flight 6. Soon, we will witness Starship liftoff, with the Super Heavy being recaptured by the gripping system, while the Starship stage ignites in space, performs a re-entry, and lands in a controlled vertical descent, especially as Flight 6 approaches. In fact, Starship's rapid progress is putting significant pressure on its competitors, most notably Blue Origin, which has yet to successfully launch its first New Glenn mission. After announcing the installation of seven BE-4 engines on the first stage last month, Blue Origin has been moving the rocket between its factories and corporate offices. However, crucial milestones, such as the first stage hot fire test, are still pending. Instead, Blue Origin is continuing to assemble New Glenn's two stages. On November 12th, it shared images of the second stage equipped with two BE-3U engines. CEO Dave Limp emphasized the remarkable capabilities of these engines, elucidating that, in the void of space, the BE-3U's nozzles expel hydrogen-rich steam at velocities approaching 10,000 miles per hour. 
The vacuum nozzles are an impressive 114.5 inches long. Afterward, Blue Origin revealed that it had successfully combined the first and second stages, stating, GS1 meets GS2. We have completed the first and second stages of New Glenn. With New Glenn's primary hardware now fully assembled, the rocket now awaits the arrival and integration of the fairing and blue ring payload. These steps indicate that integration testing may be imminent. While the second stage completed a hot burn test in September, Blue Origin has yet to perform this test on the first stage. It is possible that they intend to conduct the burn test and wet preparation exercise back-to-back, -back, a time-saving but risky approach. At the current rate, it appears that Blue Origin will begin integration testing later this month, making a November launch unlikely. The delays are not just related to final preparations, but also to the FAA approval process. Journalist Christian Davenport previously noted that progress was being made toward obtaining an FAA launch license, but getting it in time for a November launch would be challenging. While there have been several reschedulings, including moving the Blue Ring mission to New Glenn 1 and shifting the expected launch from December to November, this latest delay could push New Glenn's debut even further. Blue Origin has faced challenges in capitalizing on the delays of SpaceX's Starship to its advantage. They had originally planned to launch before Starship Flight 5, but Flight 5 successfully launched, and now Starship Flight 6 is likely to fly before New Glenn's maiden flight, a significant setback. If Blue Origin's upcoming testing is hampered, New Glenn's maiden flight could be delayed until 2025, which would be a significant setback for the company. The coming weeks will be crucial. Let's see how Blue Origin responds and whether it can finally live up to the hype surrounding New Glenn's long-awaited maiden flight. Moving on from Blue Origin, we turn to China's latest ambitious copycat project. China's aerospace sector is transitioning from copycat to innovation, marking a new phase in its spaceflight ambitions. Rather than copying SpaceX's rockets outright, China is developing its own version of NASA's space shuttle, specifically designed to carry cargo to the Tiangong Space Station. The new K spacecraft, dubbed How Long, is under development by the Chengdu Aircraft Design and Research Institute. Part of the state-owned China Aviation Industry Corporation, or AVIC, the project is one of two awarded by the China Human Spaceflight Agency, or CNSA, for low-cost reusable cargo transport, the other being the Qingzhou Cargo Craft, designed by the Chinese Academy of Sciences Microsatellite Innovation Academy, or IAMCAS for short. Until now, China has relied on the expendable Tianzhou robotic spacecraft to support Tiangong, but with a focus on reducing operating costs, the country has shifted to a reusable approach, inspired by NASA's space shuttle program. How long exhibits a striking similarity to the NASA shuttle, characterized by comparable contours, coloration, and wing architecture? Without Chinese markings, the images could easily be mistaken for an American spacecraft, underscoring China's admiration for and adaptation of established Western designs. Fong Yu Unpeng, chief designer at Haolong, has shared valuable insights regarding its unique design. The Haolong Space Cargo Shuttle is an aerodynamically designed wing aircraft with a wide wingspan and a high lift-to-drag ratio. Fong elucidated. He described a thin, blunt fuselage and large, swept-back delta wings giving the vehicle the structural characteristics of an aircraft and the functionality of a spacecraft. Unlike most modern rockets, the How Long is designed to be launched into orbit by rocket, then glided back to a runway similar to a traditional aircraft. In terms of size, the How Long is smaller than NASA's space shuttle, at 10 meters long and with a wingspan of 8 meters, providing a more compact transport vehicle with comparable capabilities. Currently in the technical verification phase, the How Long design is undergoing rigorous review with critical evaluation of its reusability, a key feature in China's efforts to reduce costs and increase sustainability for long-term spaceflight operations. Fong emphasized the significance of the reuse strategy as pivotal to China's aspirations for sustaining and potentially expanding Tiangong. After inspection, maintenance, and repairs, it will be able to carry out cargo-carrying missions again, Fong remarked, suggesting that China foresees a future wherein reusable spacecraft routinely ferry supplies and possibly crew to the space station. This strategy carries risks. 
China's space sector has faced challenges before, particularly in its attempts to emulate Western space technology, as seen in early attempts to copy SpaceX's reusable rockets. While these projects are promising, they sometimes face challenges stemming from the complexities of adapting advanced foreign designs to new contexts. Despite the challenges, China's progress is noteworthy. How long could actually succeed as a fully reusable cargo carrier for the Tiangong station? If the CNSA can overcome the engineering and financial challenges associated with this complex space system, if successful, it would significantly enhance China's autonomy and sustainability in space, offering a more cost-effective method of supporting Tiangong. Additionally, the emergence of a domestically developed reusable spacecraft puts China in a position to compete directly with other leading space agencies, potentially accelerating the global push for reusable spacecraft. The How Long project underscores China's ambition to not only catch up, but also to establish a significant presence in the space economy. While much remains to be tested and verified, How Long signals a significant shift from its previous replication strategy toward developing technologies that support China's own goals. With the project still in its early stages, it is too early to tell whether How Long will successfully overcome the technical hurdles that have stymied past attempts at copycat spaceflight. However, with this move, China clearly shows its intention to become a serious contender in the reusable space vehicle arena. That's it for today's episode. See you next time.